We will be cutting over to IFL Finance's conference call where they're addressing analysts uh, talking about uh, what the RBI has said, how much of an impact this is going to be and what they're doing uh, in terms of uh, responding to the regulators. Uh, yeah, this is important. Uh, I mean, guys, do we, uh, so do we have that? No, yeah. Just wait for the queue. Okay, we do have the IFL Let's con call. Let's cut to it. There is going to be a single case of LTV breach. So the deviation in attaining a certifying security, net weight sanction and option, and breaches in LTV, they are all connected points, and they are basically, as I said, uh, based on the net weight done by our audit team when the package go for option, which is adjusted for quality. Based on that, if you calculate, then probably you'll find that the LTV is breached. Because what branches say 22 carat, post facto audit say 20 carat, obviously uh, the value will be lesser. <laughs> But in any case, we are uh, putting in stronger systems in place to make sure that these deviations are minimal. Uh, the, also, I just want to bring to everybody's notice that all our packets, many, most of our co lending partners open each and every packet and they make their own assessment of uh, quality and the rate. The second point is related to cash, which is in excess of uh, statutory limits. <coughs> Cash far in excess of statutory limit. So we have been disbursing and collecting cash up to 2 lakh rupees. Uh, whereas RBI's point is that your disbursement cannot be more than 30,000 rupees based on certain sections of Income Tax Act. Now, the Income Tax Act interpretation is a little not clear, and different people have different views on that. And uh, every NBFC, almost every NBFC in the industry, uh, is giving cash up to 2 lakh rupees. And also, uh, but nonetheless, we are just putting in, uh, we, are, we are making sure that we co comply with this also, and we stop the disbursement of 30,000 rupees uh, as soon as we are allowed to be as a fresh disaster. The third point is about standard option processes, where last year, from October, we followed e-option by Option Tiger. Now, that is an independent platform which is also used by large banks like SBI and Bank of Baroda. We thought that a taluka level option, because then we got almost 3,000 branches across the country in smaller talukas, practically uh, may not be feasible to set the best price for the customer. Uh, and the e option, which is in a way a transparent uh, mechanism to discover price and uh, get the best price uh, for the customer as well. Uh, nonetheless, RDA circular has been very clear that the option should be taluka level and will make sure that we comply uh, with that also. The third point is about lack of transparency in charges. The only charges that, okay, the, uh, we have charges mentioned in our uh, customer receipts as well as in the website. But there is this confusion and origin from one charge. So when we actually send notices to customer about option, we charge 200 rupees. And many a times customers will pay and the option will be averted. So then they are not charged anything extra. Uh, but if the actual option happens, then there's a charge of 1500 rupees. But this extra 1500 rupees is charged only when the actual action option happens. So RBI's point was that even if option has not happened, you are charged 200 rupees. But there is option notice or option intimation charge, which is uh, also RBI requires us to send these notices physically. So these are the legal and the courier costs that we try to defray by these charges. But we made it very transparent uh, and separate with the option intimation charges and the actual option charges. So these are the major concerns which RBI has pointed out, and uh, I try to explain that uh, what they mean and what we are trying to uh, do there. Now, from the investor's point of view, I think I would like to address a couple of issues about liquidity and cost. So uh, we have adequate liquidity uh, in terms of uh, we always had at the group level, uh, and we always disclosed these numbers at quarter end. Uh, further, now uh, you know till this issue is resolved, and RBI allows us the fresh disbursement, uh, we'll continue to collect money from the repayment. And uh, uh, from that uh, perspective, I think we are adequately covered uh, for liquidity in the foreseeable future, and we don't see any challenge there. In fact, we'll be also, we are four businesses, and RBI has audited all of them. The only business that is impacted by this action is gold loan, but two thirds of our other businesses continue. And also, we shall try and Double our effort to cross sell and sell other products from the same branches. These branches have a fixed cost structure of monthly at about 65 to 70 crores, and our limb on the existing portfolio is about 125 crores on the golden portfolio. 
So I'm talking about gold loan cost and the gold loan uh, bill broadly. Uh, typically, these portfolios, uh, you know, they run down in a natural course over seven, eight months, uh, which is, you know, and so I'm just trying to give a perspective of the liquidity and the cash flow and the cost uh, that, you know, will be impacted by uh, this action. Uh, so we understand the concern that such news can generate among our, amongst our stakeholders. However, I want to make it unequivocally clear that there are no governance or ethical issues at play. These are more operational and procedural issues, and which will address uh, with all our efforts and sincerity. Our foundation remains solid, which is built on trust and support that all these stakeholders have generously extended over the years. And I also want to assure that we are, team, we are taking immediate and comprehensive, comprehensive steps to address all the concerns raised by RBI. Our team is committed to implement the necessary remedial measures, not only to comply with the regulatory standards, but also to achieve them. So our result rectifies the situation is unwavering, and we are dedicated to navigate this situation or this challenge with transparency and integrity and utmost respect for compliance standards, regulations, and principles that are guided us. So in this hour of crisis, I request all of you for your continued trust and support. Your belief in our capabilities and mission has always been our greatest strength. And together we have weathered many storms and celebrated our success. And I thank you for your continued trust and partnership and look forward to navigating this phase together with grace and strength. Uh, uh, we are taking thoughtful steps to address the current situation and our actions are guided by our commitment to all our stakeholders, customers, employees, and partners. You know, I, I, this, I also want to say that we are more than a company. We are a community that serves millions of customers, tens of thousands of employees, and channelize uh, bank credit to underserved uh, segments of the society. And therefore, uh, your support at this, in this hour is very crucial for us. While the directive of RBI appears to be a bit hard, I take a moment to express our profound gratitude and admiration for the Reserve Bank of India. Their steadfast commitment to ensure stability and integrity of our financial system is unparalleled with their proactive and prudent regulatory measures that have not only safeguarded the interests of all stakeholders in industries, but also contributed significantly to the nation's economic growth and stability. So the guidance and oversight provided by RBI are invaluable, fostering an environment of trust, transparency, and resilience across the financial landscape. And we are grateful for their visionary leadership, unwavering support, and guidance that inspire us to meet our challenge, challenges with determination and strive for excellence in all our endeavors. So we take this corrective uh, action by RBI in a constructive way as an opportunity to introspect and improve our systems and processes, compliance and controls to emerge as a stronger player in the long term. Uh, thank you. With this, I open for q &A now. Thank you very much, sir. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask questions may press star and one on their touchstone phone. If you wish to withdraw yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use only handsets while asking your question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. The first question is from the line of Dhawal from BSP Mutual Fund. Please go ahead. Uh, yeah, uh, thanks uh, for the opportunity. Uh, thanks, Nirmal, for your opening comments. I just had uh, two questions. Uh, first is uh, relating to uh, the uh, you know timeline uh, uh, that you uh, think would be required to make uh, these uh, necessary changes, uh, and uh, also you know uh, uh, in your view, how much time. Uh, would it take for the special audit to, uh, you know, get completed and, and uh, whatever uh, further uh, changes need to be made uh, to, to get implemented? So how, much, how many, can you know how many uh, months of uh, business loss uh, uh, do you envisage uh, uh, in this case? So that's the first question. Uh, uh, Jawal, I think yeah. uh, I, yeah, well, except for the cash disbursement part of it, which, you know, we can implement only when the disbursements are allowed, but more or less we are already ready, we are already compliant with and we approach RBI for an, uh, uh, as urgent a meeting and uh, whatever special audit or 
uh, you know, they want to do. So we are ready for that. And hopefully uh, this will happen uh, sooner than later. And uh, we'll try and basically uh, request and approach RBI for the fastest uh, uh, you know, process, whatever they want to run for this patient audit. Uh, understood. And uh, we are ready in terms of our you know, we have compliances or whatever they wanted, so we have implemented those things. And, you know, the audit can start maybe, you know, immediately. All right, that's RFL Finance Con Call. And steady state answers, we approached the RBI. Uh, it was too harsh, uh, and th two thirds of the business continues. Mm -hmm. Don't expect him to say anything more, any which ways, but no doubt that the stock will show uh, a reaction. What, what uh, really struck me as I would say, if I was to pick a headline uh, from uh, what he has said, is where he says these are only operational issues, no governance or ethical issues. So, Mr. Jain is in this con call trying to Underplayed. say that uh, we did nothing wrong intentionally, whatever it is, perhaps some operational issues which we can fix. So, getting the weight wrong on the gold, uh, collecting cash and not live, not uh, having consistent levy charges we didn't, we didn't, is operational. Yeah, so that's, that's, okay. that's the key positioning.